So back in October of 2023, I shared a short version of my life testimony. Um, and I had shared in there that I was not planning to go into detail about some of the things that happened in my past. Um, but God has convicted me otherwise. Um, back the end of February, I was at Ashes to Beauty conference uh, for the first time. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's just a women's conference um, where they just have different sessions and it's just the power of the Holy Spirit is there, the presence of the Holy Spirit is there, and just it was in a life a life changing experience, and I encourage everyone to go experience it at least once. Um, but during that weekend, like with every session that they had before each session, they had somebody share their testimony, um, and the testimonies were so powerful. Like I. I just realized to a whole new level of how much our testimony can help someone else. Through all of that, I just felt like God was leading me to share into a little bit more detail of my own testimony. And my prayer is just that this would encourage you. This would give you hope. And I think the word testimony means like, do it again. Um, and so if God did it for me, he will do it for you. He can do it for you. And if you are currently, um, struggling with specifically for like a lot of my testimony is about my past things that I went through, um, in my childhood and teenage years, as I will go into detail here, here in a little bit, but I just, my prayer is just that it would give you hope. It would give you the how would I say it? Like the nudge to just seek God and to surrender it all to him and that you could be set free from your past. I just feel like I need to share it. Um, I was born into an Amish family in Bloomfield, Iowa in 1998. I am the oldest of 10 children. I have so many wonderful memories of my childhood. When I was eight, my family packed up and moved to Westcliff, Colorado to start an Amish community there. By the way, I have it all written out so I don't get off track. So if I'm looking down a lot, that's why. We lived there for a year before another Amish family moved to Westcliff, followed by a couple more families. Our family's main income was raising and training horses, which meant we got to travel a lot to different horse sales. And I really love that. We also baled thousands of bales of hay each summer. At the age of 10, I started helping in the field as well as training horses. So most of my time was spent in the barn. I really enjoyed it for the most part. Um, during, my, during those years, I would have said I did enjoy it, but looking back, I know that I did enjoy it more than I pretended to. And it taught me a lot about responsibility, hard work, and just the value in that. One summer, we had another Amish family help us with hay. Their daughter helped the most, and that was a summer I will never forget, as it was the beginning of an ongoing affair between my dad and their underage daughter. I seen it happen before my eyes, but at the age of 12 or 13, I didn't know what to do about it, so I kept quiet. I won't go into too much detail out of respect for my dad, and just so you know, I love my dad so much, and because of God, our relationship has been restored and it's just God, praise God. But there was one incident that impacted my life in years to come. My dad told us he was going to going with his driver to town to run an errand and after he left I was headed to the barn to do chores. We had a guest house attached to the barn that we often walked through to go to the barn as I was walking through the guest house, a piece of paper laying on the table caught my attention. I still remember very clearly how my heart sank as I read the note my dad left informing us he was leaving our family to go away with the girl he was having an affair with. 
I think I was 13 at the time. I took the note to my mom, only to have to watch her expression as she read it. I couldn't quite grasp how a father could just abandon his family. That was the beginning of years of feeling rejected, alone, and seeking approval and acceptance from others. I wish I could say I ran to God to fill the emptiness I was feeling, but that's not the case. I turned to guys instead. And my teenage years were filled with chasing guys for love and acceptance, only to be used and taken advantage of in my vulnerability. Um, while my dad's choices impacted my life, I was still responsible for the choices I made. My dad got turned into the law because the girl was underage. As a result, our family was separated for a couple years. While it was really hard at the time to not get to see our dad, looking back, it was a gift from God. Because if my dad wasn't turned in, I don't know if he would have come back to our family. While our family was separated, my siblings, mom, and I lived in multiple different places. On the night of my 14th birthday, I was in a very low place. I still remember it as if it happened yesterday. I went into the bathroom, fell on my face, and cried out to God. I asked him into my life the best I knew how and remember feeling at peace as I got up. I picked up my Bible and started reading. Our family was in the process of leaving the Amish at the time. Salvation was very new to me with not having been taught that in the Amish church, and so that evening with God didn't go much further. Yes, I believed in God, but I wasn't living for him and seeking a personal relationship with him. I was still, in a lot of ways, I was still living for myself. After we joined a Mennonite church and our family was reunited, my sisters and I got baptized. Looking back, I did it more because that's what the others in the church did at that age and not so much because I wanted to, to do as an outward symbol of an inward change, which I also didn't understand at the time. At the time, I would have looked at baptism as you do it so you can be a member of the church and you're considered like higher up almost if you're a member of the church. And so it was never, like I had never understood it as baptizing being a symbol, like an outward symbol of an inward change of heart, like of being born again. Like I mentioned earlier, my teenage years consisted of chasing guys and I became very rebellious. Every time I thought a guy loved me, but then he would just move on, it left another mark of rejection in my heart and every time it hurt more. If only I would have known then that the only one who can fully love and fulfill me is God, it would have saved me from a lot of heartache. I turned into an extreme people pleaser and basically changed who I was depending where I went with the hopes of being accepted. Around the age of 17, I think, I started talking to a guy from Ohio. I thought it was true love and decided I wanted to move to Ohio. My parents didn't approve, so I waited till I was 18. Again, I thought I knew best. My dad reluctantly dropped me off at the airport and I moved to Ohio with $300 to my name. Don't recommend that, by the way. Ladies, do not chase a guy if yeah, I just don't recommend that. The guy I was moving to Ohio for was David's brother. After about three months of living in Ohio, I was rejected once again, and he broke up with me through a text message. At that point, the thought went through my mind of, why don't I just end my life? And I remember actually texting him that, and I don't know... To this day, I don't know if I would have ever truly went through it, if it would have come down to it, but he asked one of our friends to come pick me up, and I ended up spending the night at their place, um, and yeah, they encouraged me to just go back home. My parents paid for my flight home. I flew home with a broken, humbled heart, wishing I would have listened to my parents, I thought I was done with guys, but God had a different plan when he brought David into the picture. Thank you, Jesus. After I moved home again, I started teaching school. I'm not sure how long after I moved home that David started texting me, but I knew there was something different about him than the other guys. I could tell 
He truly cared about me. When he was 19, he left the Amish and moved to Colorado about two hours from Westcliff to work on a ranch. Soon after, he asked me if I wanted to go out to eat with him. I asked my parents if, and they gave me the okay. That was an awkward meal, but also the beginning of our future together. We started dating August 2017, got engaged June of 2018, and married September 22, 2018. We went through some marital counseling before we got married, and that was the beginning of forgiving my dad and healing from many years of heart hurt and rejection. Up to this point, I had just stuffed it all down. The first couple years of our marriage were hard financially and in every aspect. We were normal Christians going to church and reading our Bible occasionally, but there was no personal relationship with God. And when both spouses aren't pursuing a relationship with God first, that affects the marriage. October 2018, we found out we were pregnant with Micah. We ended up moving to Ohio the next spring 2019 because the cost of living wasn't as high. In the fall of 2019, I got asked to teach school in Colorado, so we moved back to Colorado because we could really use the extra income. I taught most of that school term, and then I decided to just be a stay-at-home mom, and I actually started a side business, um, network marketing from my phone, um, and became a stay-at-home mom because of that. We moved back to Ohio in April of 2021. We lived in my in-laws cabin for six months till we could move into our home we bought, which is where we live now. I always called myself a Christian, did all the Christian things like going to church, reading my Bible. Basically, I, it was very, my Christianity was very works based. I thought if I just do better, if I'm just a better person, God will accept me and I can go to heaven. But in a lot of ways, I was still living for myself. Even though I had scratched the surface, surface of working through my past, there was still a lot of, a lot I needed to work through. I had a lot of anger, which bled into relationships around me. I became obsessed with planners and planning my days down to the hour. Looking back, I realized I was doing it to give me a sense of control. I was addicted to social media. It consumed my thoughts. I was very snappy with my children. I was a very negative person. And I got to a point where I felt like I couldn't keep going any longer. When I looked at myself, I did not like the person I was becoming. I tried so hard to change. I wanted to change so bad. And I would just try harder and try harder. But it was all, I was doing it all in my own effort. And I just kept failing. On October 11, 2023, my sister shared a link to a YouTube video that I watched. And I was strongly convicted I fell on my face, crying uncontrollably, surrendering everything to God and asked him to baptize me with the Holy Spirit. Now, when we become born again, I believe we get sealed with the Holy Spirit. But there's also a moment where we need to make the choice to, to walk with the Holy Spirit and to fellowship with him, surrender to him, let him lead our lives, let him be in control. And... Growing up, I was, I wasn't taught, like, we weren't taught about the Holy Spirit. We weren't taught what it looks like to um, have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Like, I thought you, you know, become born again and then that's the end. When truly that's just be the beginning of your Christian walk. After surrendering everything thing to God and just when I asked him to... To give me the Holy Spirit, I immediately felt such a peace and a warmth come over my body. Like if you've ever experienced like an encounter with the Holy Spirit, there's just so much like you might feel tingling in your body or you feel just such a warmth go from your head down to your toes. And I just, I just immediately felt so much peace. I had so much joy and I just felt like I could just stay in that place forever it changed my life the things I was struggling with I no longer had a desire for 
I had a hunger for God's word like never before. It felt like what I was reading just came to life and I understood it like never before. Growing up, I wasn't taught about the Holy Spirit or what it looks like to fellowship with him. But after my encounter with him, I just started talking to him daily and he continued to cleanse things in my life and convict me of things I needed to surrender or get rid of. I realized that the bitterness I was holding on to from things that happened in my past was a choice. Forgiveness is a choice. It's an action we have to take, not a feeling we feel. Letting go of my past was a process. In February, like I mentioned before, um, I went to my first Ashes to Beauty conference. One of the sessions was about being set, set free from your past. During the session, I felt very strongly like God told me, you are not a victim anymore. You are a victor. You're victorious because of me, because of God, what he did in my life. I'm no longer a victim of my past. He has set me free. And not even two minutes later, the speaker said the same thing. It was such a confirmation from God. And I can truly say I'm completely free from my past. While it will always be a part of my story, it no longer defines who I am. Jesus defines who I am. Our family is not perfect. We are still working through things. We still have a lot of things to work through, um, a lot of healing to take place, but I just praise God that he has restored my relationship with my dad. I can say that I have completely forgiven my dad. I do not have any bitterness towards him. And that, if you have a past of maybe similar things, of things that your loved ones did to you, or um, whatever it might be, just know that Jesus can set you free from that. Forgiveness is a choice, and that might sound harsh, but... At the same time, um, it's also true, and you're not forgiving the person who hurt you for their sake. Um, yes, you need to forgive them and love them, um, as Jesus did, does. But at the same time, it also, forgiving those who hurt you will also play such a huge role in your own healing. And it doesn't mean that it makes what that person did like it doesn't mean that that makes it right what they did um but forgiveness is a choice and sometimes that choice has to be made over and over and over um but jesus when you invite jesus in when you surrender your life to him you live for him you keep your focus on him you seek a personal relationship with him it is amazing how he can just transform your life and take something that the enemy meant for evil and turn it around for good you know with my past you know the enemy was obviously trying to to break our family apart and to get in between our family but god restored that my dad gave his life to god and it's just it's truly been amazing to just see God work and it's not always, it's not always going to happen in our timing, but continue to pray for your loved ones um, and just keep interceding for them. You know, it, it doesn't always look like we want it to look, but God already knows exactly when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen. And just trust him in that and continue to just step out in faith and be willing to, to forgive. And even though like your past or yeah, your past is always going to be a part of your story, but it does not have to be, it does not have to define you. Like I can say, I can like just look at my past or think back over my past and realize that I am no longer 
that person. For so long, I, I felt so much shame around my past and just like thinking, what are people going to think if they know about my past? But that's in the past. And praise the Lord because of the grace and love of Jesus and his death on the cross. He has set me free from my past and I am no longer that person because of what he did for me because he saved me thank you jesus if you need somebody to talk to you if you need somebody to pray with you if you just need a listening ear just know that you can always reach out to me for so long i struggled with letting go of my past forgiving and i know what that feels feels like but I just I long to now that I have been set free from my past because of Jesus I long to help others experience that freedom too and I can't there's nothing that I can say that will set you free but I want to be there for you I want you to know that I am in your corner and just give it all to God just lay it all at his feet. Um, so yeah, that is my life testimony. And just, I just, there's nothing like looking of looking at where I came from. It's only God. It's only a work that God can do. It's nothing that I did. Nothing that I did. Like I mentioned before with going to that com that woman's conference ashes to beauty and just like realizing the power of testimonies and people sharing their testimonies how much that can impact somebody else's life or help them to be set free um i i have really been thinking over this praying about this of starting to just have people um come on to my channel and share their testimonies um i have already had my sister on you can um i'll put it in the description box as well as the link to the previous video i did with like the short form in my testimony um because i did share some things more in detail in there than i have here um but yeah let me know in the comments if you would like to hear other people's testimonies as well. Um, I would love to have David share his testimony um, if that is something that he is willing to share. And just have, yeah, if you have a testimony of how God just worked in your life or set you free from your past or whatever it might be, like, um, I would love for you to just reach out to me um, if you're willing to, if you would be willing to share your testimony on my channel, um, and yeah, just let it speak about God's goodness and how he can just completely transform your life when you surrender it to him, when you give control over to him and you just let it all up to him. I hope this bless you. Thank you for watching. And be sure to um, like this video, subscribe if you haven't yet, and also share it with a friend if you think it might encourage somebody or maybe you know somebody who might be able to relate to my story. Um, I would love for you to just share it with them. And my prayer is just that it can, it can um, give you hope that God can set you free from your past too, or he can just... He can just take what, what the enemy meant for evil and he can use it for good and it will bring all to bring glory to him. Um, yeah, be blessed.